Once you have all of that stuff taken care of, the social distancing, washing your hands, taking care of the at-risk and at-need people in your life, how are you going to spend your time? Welcome to the Creative Mindset Podcast. My name is Isolde Trachtenberg, and I'm super happy you're here. On the show, I focus on creative thinking, problem solving, and living. Most often, I'll discuss how to ignite inspiration, meet challenges, and achieve goals through creative thinking. Sometimes I'll have guests who give their perspective. Usually, it's people who are already living their best and most creative lives. Okay, let's get to it. Hello, hello, and welcome to the show. This is Isolde Trachtenberg, and I am thrilled to welcome you to the Creative Mindset Podcast. I am trying to do something a little different, coming back after a few weeks away, because life got in the way of art. So here I am, out on the balcony, during these uncertain times where we are all social distancing and figuring out what the heck the new future is going to be like. And you know me, I'm always the advocate for thinking creatively, for problem solving differently. And I get it, we have to figure out where we're going to get our hand sanitizer from and how to get the right amount of toilet paper and all of that. I, I, I'm not trying to make light of any of that. I am, however, thinking about the sort of nourishment of the spirit, right? So once you have all of that stuff taken care of, the social distancing, washing your hands, taking care of the at-risk and at-need people in your life, how are you going to spend your time? Now, I get that the first few days will probably be spent binge-watching TV, right? (laughs) I have been binge-watching Brooklyn Nine-Nine, and it's a fabulous show. I'm so excited that I get to watch it. But I've also been spending time creating. I'm catching up on some classes, for example, that I signed up for online and never found time to do. So I'm spending at least an hour and a half to two hours on a class every day. I'm still working, right? I'm still... Uh, doing some of the audiovisual stuff that I have to do and some of the voiceover stuff, and I'm still practicing music, but I'm also spending some time nourishing that inner learner. So I'm currently taking a class on how to uh, how to create a killer keynote speech because even though every single speech I've had uh, booked got canceled for the next little while, there will come a point where we're going to be done with this uh, way of living, right? We're going to have things move along, and we're going to have to get back to our lives in a significant way. And the question becomes, to me, how will I be enriched? How will I have done something new? What will I have learned during this time, right? So it can't just be about what Jake Peralta did (laughs) on Brooklyn Nine-Nine. It has to be also about what did I do to help others and also what did I do to help myself. So, for example, in the helping others, this, by the way, I get this is a little bit of a a rambling episode, but I do want to say that I have, uh, there's a method to my madness. So in the realm of helping others, there's a, a thing that I've signed up to do called Invisible Hands. It's a volunteer delivery service. So for example, it was started by one of my neighbors here in Bushwick, Brooklyn, and it's moving to other cities. If you are symptom-free, if you've been practicing social distancing, and if you haven't been out of the country for the last 14 days, you're welcome to, if you choose to, become a volunteer. And basically, we're going to be delivering uh, prescriptions or groceries to elderly people or people who are homebound and can't leave their homes to go do the grocery shopping or to pick up their prescriptions or maybe even to walk their dogs. I don't know. But, uh, but that's one of those things where if you want to reach out to others, if there's someone else who's doing that in your city, sign up. And if you want to do it, uh, get in touch with Simone. I'll, I'll see if I can put her... 
uh, information in the show notes so that you can get in touch with her and go, hey, I want to start something like this in Boulder, Colorado, or in, uh, I don't know, in Vienna or <laughs> wherever, right? So if we want to do something like that, then that's a way to spend your time that's going to be super productive and super helpful to others. So even after all that, even after you've taken care of your work and your necessities and you've helped others, how are you going to spend the rest of your time? So I, as I said, I'm taking classes that I signed up for and never, and never did. And actually, I remember now, there's a guy, I forget who he is, he's some sort of an entrepreneur who started a company that basically keeps track of all the classes that you signed up for but never did, and then makes sure you finish the classes. I'll see if I can put him in the show notes too. Because I think it's interesting. It's like, yeah, you sign up for the class and you're like, I am going to totally do this. And then you never do. And you spent the money, but you didn't do the class. So go back to your emails and see, are there classes you signed up for? Are there like you are registered emails that you haven't looked at or, or thought about in years? Go back and take those classes. They're probably still there, still being offered, so you can do that. So that's another thing that you can do. Uh, ooh, I had a thought, but it went away. Darn it. Oh, well, hopefully it'll come back. Anyway, so, yeah, if there are classes that you want to take. Oh, yeah, that's right. There's so many museums and other creativity uh, destinations are putting their collections up online so that you can take museum tours virtually. I'm going to put those links up in the show notes also because if you want to enrich yourself that way, if you want to study art, there are so many ways to do that. And in fact, probably the next episode will be uh, all about something that I saw at the Richmond Museum of Art in Richmond, Virginia, when I was there recently. It was questions that you can ask yourself when you look at a piece of art to enrich your experience of it. And we're going to talk about that next time because it has a real application to thinking creatively in your life and in your business and in your work. Thinking about those ideas and thinking about what they evoke in you is actually incredibly applicable to the rest of your life. So there's that. So you can be taking classes, you can be enriching your life with virtual tours in museums, and uh, there's a place somewhere that I saw online that's doing a uh, a virtual safari. And there are also uh, places that are putting up their, their uh, wildlife cameras. You can just see all of the different wildlife cameras up and look at the critters that are wandering around uh, out in nature. So there's that. I hope, by the way, that you are also getting sunlight. Take time out. Open the window. If you're not going outside, open your window if it faces to the sun and spend a little time basking in the sunlight. That's where I am right now. I'll see if I can put up a picture. I took a picture of myself out in the sunlight. Uh, You can't really see it's me because I'm all scrunched up because I'm in the sunlight. But yeah, get get that vitamin D. Spend a little time outside if you have any way of doing it. Uh, I'm very lucky in that my apartment comes with a balcony. But there are other ways, right? You can just open the window and stick your head out for uh, for that little bit of breath of fresh air if you're not going outside at all. The other thing that I'm doing, by the way, is I am going on bike rides almost nightly. My husband and I are taking our bikes out. We're not going anywhere specific. We're not stopping anywhere We're just taking a little bit of time when there's nobody out on the streets and getting outside and breathing some fresh air. So there's another thing that you can do. But now I come to what else can you do? And this is the creative thinking portion of the show. I encourage you to do that, to think creatively. And how can you do that? Well, if you've been wanting to learn a musical instrument and you by chance, have that musical instrument in your home, get to YouTube, search on the musical instrument and say, learn to play, and see, and I'm sure there are there, about lessons. Also, I'm going to be holding free singing classes on Zoom, zoom zoom.us, if you want to start an account. I'm going to put the link to the first class in the show notes for this, because the first class, I think, is going to be probably... Uh, Friday. They're going to be very short, no more than about 30 to 40 minutes. Anybody can join if you want to join in on the class. 
uh, I will put the link to the meeting when it's going to start. You can create your Zoom account. I'm not going to be able to talk you through how to create the Zoom account. It's really simple. Go to zoom.us and then say you want to start an account and it will talk you through it. It's really easy. And once you do that, you can click the link in the show notes at the appointed time, which will probably be like uh, today is Wednesday, so probably Friday at like 11 a.m. I'm going to hold the first singing class. It's going to be different topics each time, no more than about a half an hour each class, totally free, just because I want to help people, I want to help you learn how to sing if that's what you want to do. And I'm also going to encourage you to think about uh, another thing. So breathing. Breathing is super important. One of the things I'm starting to do right now because of a number of different reasons is I'm doing uh, an exercise, an activity, a how long can I hold my breath activity. And why am I doing that? Boy, this episode's all over the place. But it's really all about what you can do during this time of uh, social distancing and and self-isolation. So why am I doing this? I'm doing it because... It's become increasingly important to me to be able to hold my breath. One, I'm allergic to scents, right? So I have bad cigarette smoke allergies and bad cologne and detergent allergies. And I live in one of the busiest cities on the planet. So being around lots of people, many of whom are smoking, will wreck my voice. It will make my voice go kaput. So I'm taking care of myself by when I walk by it, I hold my breath. That's what I can do. And I also want to get more into swimming this summer. There's a, apparently a pool nearby us that very few people go to. So I want to start going swimming as much as I can. And I used to be able to swim the entire length of an Olympic pool underwater on one breath. And the reason I know this is because when I signed up to take scuba diving classes, our dive master, our instructor, Andy was his name, who was a former Navy SEAL, refused to give us the class. He wouldn't let us take the class unless we could swim a mile, tread water for half an hour, and be able to swim the entire length of an Olympic pool underwater on one breath. He just was like, nope, you can't take the class if you couldn't do all of those things. So it got me thinking, if I'm going to be swimming, I want to be able to hold my breath. And I wonder how long I can hold my breath. So I tried it, and it was at a minute five the first day. I'm now up to a minute 26 seconds. Ideally, I'd like to get to two minutes. And uh, and I'm posting about it on my Facebook, my personal Facebook page, my, my Hold My Breath journey. And if you're interested in doing that, just to see what kind of uh, cardiovascular health and lung health you've got uh, and whether or not you can hold your breath, Go for it. Join me. Uh, Find me on uh, facebook.com slash isolda.trachtenberg is my personal page. And uh, you can be part of those texts, uh, posts, I mean, and part of the activity. And last but not least, I'm also writing. Uh, I'm editing a, a, a book that I have already written, and I'm also writing. And I started a new fantasy mystery, which is really cool, and I'm very happy about that. But I'm also uh, really, the, the, the Fairy Godmother Diaries, my first two books, The Fiddler's Talisman and The Piano's Key, are calling for their next installment, and I'm thinking about that. Uh, so Evie and Daniel and Joanna and all their friends are going to have another adventure. I already have it all outlined. I just need to write it. So I'm thinking about working on that. And then I also am very interested in figuring out a couple of other books that I want to write uh, and a scripted podcast that is based on my novel, The Arbiter. And I already have all the actors. Um, New York actors are amazing because they are willing to play. They are very interested in playing. So while we are in this social isolation portion of our show, if you will, I need to write that first episode and get people recording so that I can start that scripted podcast now while there are people to listen to it. Uh, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, make let's make the best of this. So that's, that's my writing. And then I'm also doing things to practice 
my craft, right? I, it's funny. I've written six books. And there's still part of me that goes, I'm not a writer. And isn't that weird? Six books in and I'm still like, mm, I don't know. I'm a singer. I know I'm a singer. I'm a musician. I, and I'm a great teacher, if I say so myself. But it's amazing to me that I can accept those as part of my identity. But thinking about being a writer, I still go, huh? Really? So there's some kind of a, a, a twist in there. I was an English major in college. I've written plenty of literary criticism, or lit crit, as they call it, and dramatic criticism, drama crit. But uh, creatively, interestingly, I never thought of myself as a writer. So that's a self-identity thing and, and a self-confidence thing, I'm sure, and I'm going to need to get over it because... Nobody cares if I don't think I'm a writer, as long as I keep writing, right? So that's part of my process for the next few months, is figuring all of that out. In the meantime, you keep producing. So I've talked about this on the show before, and uh, many moons ago, back in 2010, 2011, I did an exercise where I wrote a story every single day, a micro story, a, a teeny tiny little one minute story. in one minute, right? So I wrote the story, and it only took a minute to write. I only gave myself a minute. That, that kind of pressure is really interesting when you're like, you know what, that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to write the story in one minute. And I did it every single day for a year. Now, why is that important? It's important because it, it threw open the doors of my creativity. It made me go, yeah, I can totally do this. And I did it on a prompt word. There's a there's a website called oneword.com that gives you a prompt word every day and it's whatever prompt word it feels like giving you and then you have a minute and there's a little timer to write something about the prompt word. Well, I decided not to write about the prompt word. Instead, I did write, decided to write a micro story incorporating that prompt word. So the prompt word might have been uh, bucket. I don't know, bucket. And I had to write a micro story based on the word bucket. And it might have gone something like this. Sally tipped over the bucket and the water spilled all over the sidewalk. Mom, she called. There's a problem. I, the, the water, it's all over the place. Sally, her mom, smiled. It's okay. See how the water's running out into the garden? Now it's going to water the plants. And you, you can just get some more water. But what if I spill that one too? Well then, you'll just hope it spills on the other side of the garden, won't you? There you go. So there's my story written right now incorporating the word bucket. And how do you do it? You figure out what your associations are with the word that you choose. And you just start writing. Don't hesitate. Don't wait. Don't wonder. Just start writing something. It might be blah, blah, blah. When I face a blank page, there are times when I start with the second sentence. First sentences are challenging, so don't write the first sentence. Write the second one. You don't have to be perfect. You just have to start. So my challenge to you is to write a story. And I'd love to hear it. If you do, if you do decide to take this challenge up, I'm going to do this maybe every single day. I'll give you a different prompt. I have all these cards that I made up. Uh, they're, they're called the Tell Your Story Better cards, and they're object cards, location cards, and profession cards. And there are like 20 each of each of those. And I'm going to choose a different combo every single day and just put that up as a, as a little writing prompt in the podcast. Uh, just why not? Let's do it. So the first one will be uh, the first combination of object, profession, and location will be hang on let's see now ooh, interesting the object is shovel the profession is doctor, and the location is attic. 
So now your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to write a story that incorporates one, two, or all three of these elements. Now the question you might ask yourself is, what does a shovel, a doctor, and an attic, what do they all have in common? Well, they might not have anything in common for you now, but sit down for a second and start with the second sentence and see what all three might have uh, to tell you as far as a story. Let the story come to you. Don't try to grasp for it. So if I were to write a story incorporating shovel, doctor, and attic, uh, it might go something like this. Let's see now. Dr. Adams, nurse gently called from below. Are you sure you want to be up there? Just a second, nurse gently. Dr. Adams gazed around the attic for the thing he sought. Doctor, we don't have time for this. There's a treasure to dig up. Nurse gently, I'll be right there. I'm looking for one last thing. But I have the shovels down here. Nurse gently, you can't dig for buried treasure without the proper equipment. Dr. Adams found what he'd been looking for. He put on his pirate hat, attached his stethoscope, and made his way down the attic stairs. All right, nurse, let's go find those doubloons. Oh, doctor, you're so handsome. Marley smiled. And doctor, is it okay if I bring my teddy bear to the treasure hunt? <sighs> of course, nurse gently. Teddy bears are always welcome. So there you go. It's a silly story about kids playing doctor and also going for buried treasure hunt, but there it is. So whatever it is that you think about shovel, attic, and doctor, it could be a buried treasure, it could be um, hunting up the right mushrooms to uh, make an herbal medicine in the middle of a storm, uh, it could be any number of things, right? The doctor could be not a medical doctor, but a PhD in art history, and he needs a shovel because someone said that they had hidden uh, an undiscovered Van Gogh painting on, in an underground bunker, right? Any number of things could be happening here. So if you were going to write about attic, shovel, and doctor, what would you write? And also, uh, take care of yourself, right? Do what, what makes you happy. I'm just suggesting doing something that sparks your creative ingenuity because it will help you think creatively in other times and in other ways. But you need to do what takes care of you. If you're not a writer or if you don't want to write, because I think everybody's a writer, I think everybody's a creative, you know that, you should do what makes you feel joyful and giddy. Whatever that is, m making room, making space for happiness and creativity in these uncertain times is a beautiful thing and I hope you do it. I'll be back tomorrow with, ooh, I'm sitting out on the balcony still and my kitty just came out. I'll be back tomorrow with another writing prompt. Friday, because today is Wednesday the 18th of March, 2020. Uh, I'll be back on Friday with, no, I'll be back tomorrow with a writing prompt, but Friday at, I think, 11 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, I will be doing the free Zoom singing class. So if you decide to join in, the link to that meeting will be in the show notes. I will also link the, uh, the virtual wildlife cameras and the virtual museum tours as part of the show notes also, and maybe even a picture of me sitting in the sunlight squinting. <laughs> All right, this is Isolde Trachtenberg sitting on the balcony here in Bushwick, Brooklyn with a Creative Mindset podcast. As always, I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to see your stories if you decide to write one or two or 22. And I hope to hear from you soon, and I hope to connect with you soon. Until next time, stay creative. Oh, and also... Wash your hands. I've decided that wash your hands is the new 
I love you. So, wash your hands. Thanks so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you being here. Please subscribe to the podcast if you're new, and please tell your friends about the community we're building here. Today's episode was produced by Isolde Trachtenberg and is copyright Isolde Trachtenberg 2019. Today's music was from Kevin McLeod, Laser Groove, and Avi Marimba, brought to you by Creative Commons License 3.0. As always, please remember this is for educational and entertainment purposes only. Past performance does not guarantee future results, although we can always hope. Until next time, I send you all all of my love.